All right, so now for number 12, we're given the original function f of x, fifth root of 3x plus 5. We're told to find the inverse of that. So we want to follow the four-step process that was talked about in lecture for going through. So I'm going to go ahead and run through each of those. Now the first step that you would do is take the original one, replace the f of x with a y. So here's my first step. I'm going to do y equals fifth root of 3x plus 5. That's the first, first step. Step number two is we're going to switch the x and the y. Whenever we want to find an inverse, the x and the y are always switched. So if I do x equals fifth root of 3y plus 5. That's the end of step two. Step three, we want to raise both sides to the power of 5 because step three involves, uh, it says solve for y. So in order to solve for y, we got to get, get, the I, I, uh, get the y isolated. So we're going to raise both to the fifth power. So I get x to the fifth here. And then I'm going to tell you the fifth root of 3y plus 5. I'm going to raise that to the power of 5 also. I'm doing that because the fifth power will cancel out the 5 inside here. And I'll get x to the fifth will equal 3y plus 5. And then now I, I have the y I can isolate by subtracting the 5 and dividing by 3. So I'm going to do that. If I subtract the 5 from both sides, I get x to the fifth minus 5 equals 3y. Divide both sides by 3, and I get y equals, I get this up here, uh, y equals uh, x to the fifth minus 5, all divided by 3. The last step, number 4, is you're going to change the y into the inverse notation because we want to write our answer correctly. It says find the inverse, so we don't want to leave our answer as y equals. We've got to make sure we have the inverse as part of our answer there. So x to the fifth minus 5, all over 3 that would be your inverse. Now, the other ones that we talked about, if you look at the lecture notes that we did for this particular section, you're going to notice that besides problems that look like this, we also did problems that have some kind of fraction in it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one too as one more example of this so that way you have both versions and you understand how to do that. So this is the answer for the one in the sample test, but I'm going to go ahead and make up another one to show you for ones that have a fraction. Okay, so let's do one with a fraction. Let's do x minus 2 over 2x plus 7. Let's just go ahead and do that. We want to find the inverse of this one. This is done a little bit differently as far as the algebra is concerned. Okay, so step number one, we write that as y equals x minus 2 over 2x minus 7. Step two, replace or switch the x and the y. So we're going to switch x and the y. We have x equals y minus 2. 2y minus 7. Okay, so step two. Now step three, we have to solve for y. To do that, the first thing you want to do for something like this is get rid of the fraction. Okay, so this, I'll write that at x over 1, and I'm going to do my cross multiplying method. So I'm going to do x times 2y minus 7, and that's going to equal 1 times y minus 2, so I get that. Okay, so I have to, the idea here is since I have two variables, two y's, I want to get both of them to the same side of the equation. That way I can factor out a y and I can solve for the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and write it, so now that I have it in this form, I'll multiply by x, I get 2xy minus 7x is going to equal y minus 2. I want to move, all, put all the y's on one side of the equation. So I'll come up here and I'm going to do 2xy, I'm going to Take this y across the equal sign, so I have that, 2xy minus y. On the other side, I'm going to add, I'm going to move the 7x over across the equal, so I get 7x minus 2 over there. Now that I have both the y's on one side, I'm going to isolate that by pulling it out. So I pull out a y, I get 2x minus 1 there, and I get 7x minus 2 left over. The last thing I'll do is divide both sides by part in front of the y. This is the whole reason why I wanted to get the y's on both sides, so that way we could factor it out so both the y's turn into a single one. Then we can divide both sides and we get 7x minus 2 over 2x minus 1. Then we just put in the function notation. So we have f of negative, f of x, uh, negative inverse, you get 7x minus 2 over 2x minus 1. This is going to be your final answer. So besides the one that's on the sample, you're also responsible for understanding how to do a problem such as this.